Welcome, thanks for coming. Today we're going to be talking about the board game Set a Watch. And more specifically what we're going to be talking about is questions that I'm going to answer to help you determine whether or not you want to buy it or not. Uh, so essentially what I've done is I've scoured the internet. Yes, pretty much all of the internet. And what I've done is I've kind of looked for questions that people had that they were asking hey, should I get this game? I'm curious about this question or this question, and essentially questions just to help them decide, hey, should I buy this or should I not? They kind of seemed on the fence. Um, so essentially, I gathered all of those types of questions, and now we're going to answer them here for you. Okay, so let's get started. Question number one. What is it? Uh, so Set Watch is a board game for one to four players cooperatively. Um, essentially, you have four adventurers, and the goal of the game is for all four of these adventurers, they will be visiting nine different locations, and <clears throat> in those nine locations, what they want to do is they want to clear all the enemies out and get rid of everything. So, or I guess all the enemies is everything. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, um... So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be choosing four adventurers. And those four adventurers, uh, every location, they are going to visit one. And once they visit a location, you're going to choose one adventurer to sit out and rest at camp. Uh, when they're at camp, what that adventurer is going to do is they're essentially going to do different actions and activate other little abilities to essentially help the other three adventurers who are going to be on watch. Yeah, that's where the name comes into play. Um, and what those three adventurers are going to do is they are essentially going to fight a line of enemies. It's going to be anywhere from five enemies all the way into the final round. You might be hitting like anywhere from like 10 to 15 enemies. Could be 20 if you didn't do that good up to that point. Um, <clears throat> and what those adventurers are going to do is they're going to activate different abilities, do direct attacks, and try to clear that wave of enemies out. Um, and you're going to do that for nine locations until the very end. Okay, next question. So uh, this is the most common one I've seen out there. Um, is what is the difference between the retail version and the deluxe version? Um, it's, it's interesting because it's kind of hard to find that out there. Uh, so for starters, uh, for the deluxe version, you're going to get this nice little slip cover. Um, it's just a fancy little thing. It goes over the box. Has a nice dressing, boop, and it looks pretty good. Uh, so you're gonna get the slip cover. Um, <clears throat> you're gonna get upgraded tokens. Uh, you've got tokens to essentially talk about. Um, it's just tokens. There's, I don't know how else to put it. Uh, you've got little campfire tokens. You have four of those. Those essentially indicate what adventurer has rested at camp or what adventurer hasn't rested at camp. Um, everyone's got to do it twice during the game, so those are upgraded. They're like laser engraved wooden little deals. Um, <clears throat> you've got fire tokens. Those represent how bright your fire is. So in the base game, you get one of those tokens. In the deluxe version, you get three. And they're progressively bigger to indicate, hey, the fire is bigger. Uh, and thematically in the game, that matters because the bigger the fire is, the more enemies that you can see in that line that you're going to be attacking. Uh, so those are the little component ones. I believe the dice are all the same. To me, the biggest addition, uh, which is why you would pick up the Deluxe, is that it essentially has more cards. Uh, in this game, <clears throat> the cards are... Let's see, there's three, four different cards? So pretty much what you're going to get is uh, you have creatures, which those are the ones that you normally fight against. Those are the basic creatures that you'll be going against. In the base game uh, and the retail, or I guess retail deluxe, all those creatures are the same. Uh, so you get all those creatures, but then there's these more powerful monsters called Unhallowed. Uh, they're kind of like super enemies, I guess you would say. So I believe in the retail version, you get, uh, man, I want to say it's nine of them. And then you end up getting a few more in the deluxe version. Same thing for locations. You're gonna be visiting locations. In the retail version, you get 20. In the deluxe version, you're gonna get about 30 of them. And the way that kind of changes things up is you visit a location, it has some effect on it. It tells you how many enemies you're gonna fight. So having more of those is nice. Um, you're gonna get more summon cards. These are like the big bad cards that you don't wanna see in the game. 
essentially a summon card, you draw it, you see it, really bad things happen. Usually if someone gets hurt on your team, you summon one of these big bad guys called the Unhallowed cards, and it's not that great. Uh, so you get more of those. The base game comes with four. You end up getting five more in the deluxe version, and they have different effects than the base ones. Uh, and I guess the, the big thing with all of this too is uh, it's, you don't always play with all of the cards whenever you play the game. So having more of the cards is kind of nice because it adds up more of that variability the more times you play it. Uh, so that's the big difference between the two. Okay, next question. So how is the solo experience? And how is it at like one, two, three, four players? Uh, for me personally, I really enjoyed it as a solo game. <clears throat> I think it works really well. Uh, regardless of the number of players that you have, you're always gonna be playing with four adventurers. Um, so if you're playing it as one player, you're gonna be controlling all four. If you play it as two player, you're gonna split it up, right? I get two, my partner gets two, and so on and so forth. Um, <clears throat> It might be a little bit overwhelming at the beginning if you're just playing it solo uh, just because you're still getting used to everyone's abilities. Each of the adventurers has four abil no, five abilities and you only ever play with three at a time. Uh, there's things that you can switch them out um, but really it's uh, <clears throat> you can kind of switch out those cards but really once you kind of learn all of them it's not as daunting to play solo. Uh, oh, and that's actually the thing I forgot to mention. The big, big addition between Deluxe and Retail as well. So that base game comes with six adventurers that you can play as, the Retail version. The Deluxe version actually adds two more, uh, the Knight and the Bard. So again, you're only playing with four. Instead of having a pool of six, now you get a pool of eight to choose from. So uh, that's, uh, that's pretty nice. Uh, and actually, I really like those two characters too. So... Um, <laughs> Uh, so anyways, uh, so for two players, uh, it's been nice. I haven't personally played it at three and four, uh, but when I have played it at two, it's been fine, which kind of uh, necessitates the question of, is the game prone to quarterbacking, right? Um, with two people, I'd say yes. It really, and just kind of like with quarterbacking, if you're not familiar with it, it's essentially in a cooperative game, can one person take over and essentially just dictates all the other people at the table you're gonna do this you're gonna do this you're gonna do this and essentially that one person is gonna optimize the whole puzzle game for everybody so yeah this game is prone to that but it kind of depends on who you're playing with right for me personally uh with the person that i play with the most uh, we haven't really had an issue with quarterbacking uh, i i look at my two characters she looks at her two characters <clears throat> and for us it's kind of collaborative right it's hey, I've got these abilities, or oh, maybe I could do this, or maybe I could do this, and it's kind of, you're almost feeding off that energy of each other. So is it possible? Yes, but maybe find the right people to play with. Hmm. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so next question. How is the game balance? I've seen this a lot out there too. Uh, people are asking, oh, is this game too easy? Is it too hard? Uh, personally, for me, I get my butt beat at it, uh, but really, I don't. I don't mind. I played it probably, probably about ten times to this point, and I think I've only won twice. Uh, it doesn't really bother me personally. I kind of like it when there's a cooperative type game, and I can't just run all over it, right? It's uh, if it's too easy, it's it can still be fun, but I, I like the challenge of this game, and it's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, it can be pretty rough at times, and a lot of that too is because when you put out these monsters in a wave, right, it's all about the order that they end up being in. And uh, that's actually pretty, what's kind of neat because they all have different abilities and there's certain synergies. If, if I reveal this one and they happen to be in the first position, then they might re put someone else in front of them and then they have a bad ability. And it kind of, sometimes it can get really bad really quickly. Um, <laughs> and I, I, I've had swingy games too. It's, it's, it's interesting. It's a type of game where either I'm going to make it to that final location, that ninth location, or I'm pretty much done within like the third round. Uh, and it's interesting actually, the more I play it, uh, I've kind of noticed if I can make it past the fourth round and get into the fifth, at that point I'm usually pretty comfortable uh, and I haven't lost. It, it, it's interesting. It's, uh, it's usually just in that beginning parts that you'll just get wiped with. And 
I don't feel like it's the abilities I started with or anything like that. It's really, a lot of times it comes down to the what monsters uh, are you dealt. And personally, I haven't really minded it. I, I think it's kind of fun. Uh, maybe that's the masochistic part inside of me. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, all right, next question. So that begs the question, how replayable is this game? Uh, it's interesting. I uh, Let's say I played it about 10 times. Like I said, I lost quite a bit. I... I really enjoy this game. I I don't know if it's infinite replayable. Uh, and this kind of is where the deluxe version <laughs> comes into play more. I obviously have the deluxe version because I showed you the slipcover. I didn't just buy the slipcover just to show you this. So with the deluxe version, I, I'm still discovering all the locations. Uh, I'm still seeing different enemy synergies. Uh, it's kind of nice actually because the more I play, I'm starting to learn the deck more. And I'm kind of thinking, oh, okay. I really don't want this vampire to show up because if the vampire shows up and I just reveal him, I lose a die. And that really stinks because if you lose a die, it's essentially you lose the number of actions that you can do during that turn. Um, and two, with eight characters, for me, I don't think I've played a single game where I've had that same combination of four characters, even out of the eight. It's been really nice and it's it's really neat kind of discovering those different synergies between the different characters of, hey, I never had this combo before and then... Even then, the abilities that they're dealt, they're not always the same, right? Because they've got five abilities. I only ever use three. Uh, I can't switch them out, but it's just, it's neat seeing, oh, this one feeds off this. This one feeds off this. And discovering those kind of synergies between the characters as well. Um, so, I, <laughs> this one's interesting. I, I've seen this a lot, too. And if you go into, like, a Board Game Geek, uh, their website, you'll see a lot of this in the forums. Uh, some folks will ask, how fiddly is the game? So, by that, uh, they're kind of meaning... How's the rule book? Um, <laughs> it's interesting because if, if you go on that form, you'll see a lot of people. They they're like, "Oh, the rule book! It, it's good. Oh, it's awful. Oh, I can't figure it out." And a lot of times, the questions asked, it's like, if you, if you read that rule book, uh, you know, it might not be organized the best, but really, it's it's all there in that rule book. Uh, the only thing I think that might throw some people off and it's thrown me off too but the more you play the game you kind of get a better feel for it is there's a lot of card specific things and there can be very niche scenarios where i might have this card come up or i might have this ability i'm like well can i do this or can i not do this and uh that happens every once in a while uh, a lot of times it's in the book uh that second half of the rule book actually is uh it essentially gives you a playthrough, like a one round. It's okay, you start here, do this, do this, they do this, and they kind of walk you through it. And in that one, they give you a lot of good examples of the little niche, weird scenarios that you might hit. Uh, probably because when they were playtesting, they'd seen those happen. Um, there is a worst case scenario on Board Game Geek. If you go there, boardgamegeek.com, on the forums there, they have, uh, or I guess it's not the forums, it's, I think it's the file section. They have like some fan-made FAQs where they compiled all the questions that the designers actually asked or they answered for people. So that, that's kind of nice. It, it gives you like creature-specific uh, help, I guess you would say. Creature location, ability, stuff like that. But do you need it? Maybe a couple of times, but honestly, I, I think it's okay. So uh, last couple questions here. Any thoughts on younger kid playable? Is it good with kids? Uh, the box says it's for ages 10 and older. Uh, really, <laughs> some of the monster cards look pretty scary. Uh, to me, that's kind of the threshold, most likely, right? It's, uh, are you going to get spooked by these monster cards? And they are kind of creepy, honestly. It's like decrepit-looking zombies and bad-looking, not, not great-looking guys. So it's kind of like what the tolerance is that at, right? As far as the text and the maturity and the theme, uh, really there's no cuss words, violent text, anything like that. All the text on these cards are just basically, this is what the card does. It's take a die away, take damage, do this to this person. So there's nothing really crazy with that. Uh, and then the last question, ah, this one's interesting. I see this a lot too. Is it similar to any other games? And a lot of people, the one they really naturally want to compare this to is One Deck Dungeon. Uh, and it's it's interesting, you know, it's... Uh, it's a similar type game to One Deck Dungeon in the sense that, yes, I'm going to fight wave after wave after wave after wave of enemies until the game's over. But to me, that's kind of where the comparisons end. Uh, the way I kind of see it is if I want to play Settle Watch, 
It's if I, my brain's not fried. If I feel like I'm in the mood for some interesting decisions. Uh, if I want to play One Deck Dungeon, it's usually more of, hey, is my brain a little bit more fried? And do I just want a nice little relaxing game where I just chuck a ton of dice and then do a little optimization puzzle? Um, so I, I wouldn't say one's better than the other. Um, they, they are similar, but I, I, again, it's tough because in One Deck Dungeon, if you're familiar with that, you only ever play against one enemy or one trap at a time. Uh, so it's always, let me reveal an enemy and then let me attack just that one person. But instead of watch, uh, you've got four adventurers and you're literally facing a line of enemies. Um, and you're pretty much trying to handle in the moment, okay, what do I have revealed? Who do I want to go against? Should I fight these guys in the front? Or, oh wait, I've got this ability right here that lets me kill an unrevealed card. So maybe I'll do that and then hopefully it takes out the uh, vampire. I really don't like the vampires if you haven't figured it out. It's <laughs> they stink. <laughs> they just they take your dice away and you have less actions. And it's like, you can't do as much. It's, it's really frustrating for me. <laughs> they come up and I'm like, no, please stop. So it's uh, that's a lot of times I'm just like, how do I negate the vampires before they show up? Um, so it's uh, it, there's a lot of interesting choices there. So I, I think One Deck Dumbler, Dungeon, One Deck Dumbler? One Deck Dungeon would be the most similar. But again, it's... Uh, I think these are kind of on different levels. Uh, so, anyways, that's all the questions that I've kind of seen. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure there's other ones. Well, no, there's not other ones because I did my due diligence. I, I literally scoured everything. So, <laughs> anyways, um, if you can't tell, I obviously really like this game. Uh, I hope me answering some of these questions for you helps you decide whether or not that you actually do want to purchase this game or not. Uh, it's uh, it's a fun game. So, like I said, hope this helped you. Until next time, so long.